Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. A couple weeks ago, I made a video about the relationship between ancient Egyptians and their cats, which was inspired by my brand new kitten, Emma. Today, I wanted to do a video kind of all about Emma and our process of getting a cat, why we decided to get a cat, where we got her from, how we picked her breed, and also how we managed it while living in a furnished rented flat in the UK. If you hear any weird tinkling noises in the background of this video, that's because Emma is in the living room with me playing with her ball. She likes to be in the room with me basically at all times at this point, so if it wasn't that, she would be yowling outside the door. So <laughs> we picked the lesser of two evils. To kind of liven things up in today's video as well, I will have some footage that I have been taking of Emma in her natural habitat so stay tuned in this video for lots of cute kitty videos because I mean I might be biased but she's like the cutest cat that's ever lived. If you haven't already don't forget to subscribe to my channel to show your support for what I'm doing here and also if you have time uh, a like or a follow on Instagram would also be greatly appreciated. My profile on Instagram is at rachelalmond.dicks. All right guys let's dig in. Firstly, the kind of big question I think a lot of the times is like, why did you decide to get a cat? What, you know, why now instead of previously, I guess? So for us, there's a couple different reasons as to why we decided that we wanted to get a cat. I have loved cats and been partial to cats, probably over dogs, I would say my entire life. And why I've never had a cat previously is because when I was younger, I got diagnosed with having a cat allergy along with the rest of my family. So that was never really an option. And pretty much since then, I've avoided cats in general. Don't pet them, don't come near them. They would make me sneeze, make my eyes water, all that kind of stuff. So I just kind of avoided them in general. During the first lockdown in 2020, a pair of our friends who live quite close to us decided to get a lockdown kitten. Her name is Ivy. And once we were allowed to, because they were so close to us, we did go and visit them and their new cat. And I noticed when we saw her that I actually wasn't having that much of an allergic reaction to her. My eyes were maybe a little bit itchy and I was occasionally sneezy, but it really wasn't nearly as bad as it used to be. And it was very easily controllable by an over-the-counter antihistamine pill, which honestly is something I usually take anyway because I'm also allergic to inconvenient things like dust mites and pollen. Because we live so close and I was really enjoying being able to interact with a cat, I actually had the opportunity to cat sit her quite a few times which kind of introduced me to what it was like to actually own a cat as opposed to just visiting it and I kind of saw how nice and low maintenance they were especially in comparison to again a dog who for example needs walks every day I found cats to be a lot more manageable for my particular lifestyle which is lazy another factor in why I wanted to get a cat was because I went from being partially and mostly office based to working entirely from home during and now after the pandemic. And I just found myself really missing kind of like the social interaction of an office, you know, then it's more natural to take a break and grab a tea or a coffee and chat to somebody. And I thought that having a little friend, as I called it, at home would help me a bit more with my mental health in that aspect. As I said, we decided to get a cat in that I really wanted a cat. My husband uh, was not particularly interested in it. I wouldn't say that he was actively against it, but he wasn't actively for it in that he is a very practical person and he couldn't really see um, a good reason why to spend the money on the cat when he couldn't really understand the tangible benefits of having one. Spoiler alert, now that we have her, I think he's definitely changed his mind and he's become a bit of a very devoted cat dad to our cat. Once I decided I wanted to get a cat, I didn't want to just like jump right in. I wanted to do a lot of research to make sure I was making the right choice so that I wouldn't end up getting a cat, not really knowing a bit more in depth about what it entailed even though I had cats sat before and then end up having to give away the cat that was like my ultimate no-no I did not want that to be a possibility um, especially in regards to my allergies I didn't want to get a cat and then find out that I reacted to them differently than I did to Ivy in addition to this one of the 
caveats for us getting a cat from my husband was that he did not want to have tons of cat hair everywhere which is something that i honestly agreed with so we decided that we wanted to go for a shorter haired breed but not quite like a sphinx cat which is the the one that's known as the hairless cat so as i said i don't have a strong allergic to reaction to cats anymore but i do still have a minor one in terms of what kind of cat that we were going to get I had read a long time ago about the myth of a hypoallergenic cat and in case you didn't already know this, in short, what most people are allergic to in cats is a protein that is produced in their saliva that when they lick themselves and clean themselves gets on their fur and their skin and it then permeates to your house. So that's why a lot of people think that you're allergic to cat hair. It's not. It's something that's like part of their DNA. Um, so you cannot breed that protein out of cats and they haven't genetically engineered a cat without it to my knowledge but there are certain theories floating around on the internet that there are a couple different breeds that are better for people with allergies because those cats produce slightly less of that protein. This theory is entirely speculative, it's not really been backed up by science but Definitely, if you go on the internet, you will see tons of stories of people who've gotten Russian blue cats and they either have little or no re allergic reaction to them. So it is does seem to be something that it is a trend, but it is something that you should research and try and test for yourself if possible. Um, because obviously it's going to be different for each individual person and also in some ways for each individual cat. There are several different cat breeds that fit within this category of less allergic cats and out of those ones the one that appealed to me the most was the Russian Blue. So this is what Emma is. They are a silvery grey short haired cat they are known for being really playful and sociable cats that are highly intelligent and susceptible to training. And while they, you know, love their humans and they love spending time with them, they're also the kind of cat that is okay to be left at home for like the duration of a workday if you perhaps have to go into an office. They are also a naturally occurring breed from Russia. So this is good in that uh, it means that they are not, they haven't been like crossbred you know, like something like, you know, a pug to have certain characteristics, which means that they tend to be a healthier, longer lived breed that isn't exactly prone to illness. I'm sure by now some people have noticed or wondered perhaps on whether or not we chose to adopt or buy a cat from a breeder. And I know that this will disappoint probably quite a few people, but we did make the decision to go with a breeder over a shelter for, again, a couple different reasons. The primary one is that I wanted to get a cat sooner rather than later and because Russian Blues are quite a highly sought after and highly valued breed, like they are, they are like a pedigree style breed. They don't often show up in shelters, at least the ones near me. I, I did look at shelters, so if we were to try and wait for one, it, we could have been waiting for quite a long while. Um, additionally, and this is quite selfish, but I wanted to have a kitten. <laughs> they're cute, they're cuddly, and they're playful, and I had missed out on decades of cuddling and snuggling kittens because of my allergies and I just kind of wanted to make up for lost time by being able to experience having a kitten of my own. Thirdly, as I mentioned at the beginning, we live in a rented flat and in the UK they often come with all of their furnishings so you know pretty much everything in our flat with the exception of our bookcase actually is owned by my landlord. Keeping their furniture as intact as possible was kind of key for me so I wanted to go to a breeder that where I could look at the I could view the cat her history, see her parents and the environment that she's being raised in and see that she's already being taught good behaviors before we even get the cat. And a lot of this was to try and prevent, you know, potentially any like toilet accidents when she came to our house and then also keeping her from destroying the furniture. And that's not to say that that is something that would have happened with a shelter cat, but I just felt more comfortable getting a cat from a breeder. and my instincts were right. She's been pretty good about all of those things that we were concerned about. We decided to get a cat. I figured out what kind of cat that I wanted to get. Next, before I even get, began looking for a kitten, I had to make sure that I had permission 
from our landlord to get a cat. So because most UK rental flats are furnished, the vast majority of landlords in history uh, have said you cannot have pets. I actually read that it was like 7% of landlords in the UK allowed pets. And our flat was no difference to this. That was a clause for when we moved in. Luckily for us, we have a really good relationship with our letting agent slash landlord. And also we've been living in this flat for a uh, prolonged period of time, I think about five years, and we've not done any like kind of major damage and we've taken care of the flat pretty well. So I think that formed a really good basis of why they trusted us to be able to get a cat. And then as well, I kind of wrote an email where I tried to address all of the concerns a potential landlord would have and, and come up with how we would deal with those concerns. In this, we offered to pay some extra money towards the deposit for the flat, you know, in case there is some kind of damage that needs to be repaired. The second thing was to either pay for the flat to get cleaned or rent like a carpet machine to make sure the carpets are properly cleaned when we leave the flat. I also offered to buy protectors for the two couches that we have so that, you know, she wouldn't necessarily, if she was perhaps going to like try scratching something, then it would be scratching the protectors and not the couch underneath it. And then the last thing was something that I've already talked a little bit about, but making sure that we're getting a cat from a like good reputable breeder who's already started teaching the cat like good habits like not scratching and that we could then continue doing she's come to say hello hey sweet oh she's purring in my arms okay this is going to make it difficult where do you want to go where do you want to go down okay our, our landlord did agree to basically all those conditions the extra money that they asked for a deposit was 100 pounds which is really like not that much it also helps that the laws in the uk around letting and pets are changing. I think this was actually largely spurred by all the people buying pets during the pandemic. So now the way the law works in the UK, a landlord cannot refuse a request from a tenant to get a pet without actually having like a good reason. It can't just be like a flat out no. So this obviously I think probably worked in my favor quite a bit. Once we had our permission from our landlord, I started the search for a kitten. <laughs> One of the things I did was join a Facebook group for Russian blue cats in the UK, uh, which regularly had people posting pictures of their cats and I don't think that they're necessarily supposed to but people did post when they had kittens available so I thought that might be a potential resource. I also kept an eye on places like Gumtree and Pets for Homes. I did not want to have to travel super super far to try and get a cat. I wanted to try and get something like a bit more locally. Looking at these things also helped give me a really good idea of what the cost of a kitten might be because it can vary quite a lot. I did inquire at a few of the official listed breeders from the Russian Blue Breeders Association in the UK which is associated with like the wider pedigree kitten breeding association. These people are the people that will like breed show cats and like full on pedigree cats that come with like papers and everything. But unfortunately, none of them ever got back to me. And I think that probably has a lot to do with the fact that, you know, they have waiting lists for all of their cats. And also it doesn't help that there are only two of those breeders in Scotland. This meant that I had to go outside of the RBBA, which is risky and I don't know if I can necessarily recommend it because I definitely didn't want to be going to like a kitten farm. I don't want to like support that. But you know, there are people who breed outside of that association who have Russian blue cats and who take care of their cats and are responsible breeders. In our case, I was really lucky that through the Facebook group that I joined, uh, our I found our breeder who is based in Edinburgh, which was very convenient for us. It's local. They live like 10 minutes away from where we are. And she had kittens that were going to be ready in like a couple months. So it wasn't necessarily next month or right away, which gave us a lot more time to like kind of prepare for having a cat. And they were more than happy for us to come and visit before we had to like put down any money.
when we did go visit them, they met all of my like criteria that I had on this list that I just talked about. They were so friendly and nice and they were giving us so many like tips and telling us things about like having a kitten, things that we should know, make sure that we're getting, etc. They actually helped us pick out our cat because I had read that obviously the breeder will have a better idea of all the different personalities of the kittens than you do. So if you can talk to them a little bit about what you want in a cat, they can maybe help you pick the kitten. So for me personally, I just really wanted a girl cat. I also wanted to make sure that we were getting one that was gonna be nice and cuddly and sociable with us. That wasn't necessarily always gonna be like hiding away all the time, it was nice and playful. And they recommended Emma to us. She was actually, uh, she was actually the favorite of the litter of the breeder. So we picked her and so, so, so glad that we did. Once we visited, we decided we would take her. So we paid a deposit for her and the breeder was really good about like in the time until we picked up the cat, she would like send us little pictures and updates and videos of how she was doing. So it kind of like kept us in the loop. And because again, they live so close, we were actually able to go and see her again before we picked her up. So we got to meet her more than once before we took her home. They even said that if we were like leaving town and we couldn't find someone to cat sit for us to like get in touch and see if they were available. To prepare ourselves for getting a kitten, I bought quite a few things, <laughs> mostly on Amazon. I bought so many things off of Amazon actually for the cat that I got an email from them asking the, if I was a business because <laughs> I was buying so many things. Uh, no. <laughs> safe to say that she's pretty spoiled. I hit all the big things that is recommended that you get. She joined us when she was about 11 weeks old and I must say that we are loving life as cat parents. We are both convinced that we picked the absolute perfect cat for us and we're really happy that we got her from the breeder that we did. We really do feel like she came like pre-programmed with like a lot of really good behavior. She likes being around people. She doesn't run away when we have guests over. She's very cuddly. She likes to be picked up. She scratches a bit, but she's not like destroying any of our furniture yet. Knock on wood. She is okay with us touching and playing with her paws and clipping her claws. My husband gives her paw massages um, quite regularly. <laughs> right away, as soon as we brought her home, she found and has been using her litter box and we've not found any accidents around the flat. This doesn't mean that having a kitten isn't challenging at times. You know, they are babies, they need to learn behavior. Sometimes they misbehave and sometimes they do things that you don't like. At the time that I'm putting up this video, she is currently exploring counter surfing and climbing as high as she possibly can in our flat, uh, potentially using us as a means to get to higher up spots, which is, yeah, interesting to watch. <laughs> so we're working on not counter surfing, you know, and we're trying to provide her options so that she can get up as high as she, she feels she needs to be. I've been continuing my research into cat training, so you know, I've mostly gotten her to stop climbing up me when I'm not paying attention to her when I'm cooking in the kitchen. She comes when I call her name about like 75% of the time. And at this moment, she's not interested in chewing the vast majority of our cables unless they're like dangling in front of her face. And importantly, she doesn't like scratch or bite us. So she's not like an ang she's not angry with us as far as I can tell. If you guys are interested, I can do another video on kind of like the basic training that I've been doing for the cat and like what methods have worked for me and what haven't. It is definitely a thing where you have to use multiple methods for different things. It's never just like a one trick shot for, the, for that. Last but not least, uh, picking her name. So in case you didn't watch my ancient Egyptian video, I had originally wanted to give her an Egyptian name, but I couldn't find one that I liked. And then we settled on Emma because my husband's name is Ross and my name is Rachel. I do love friends. 
he doesn't really care but i thought emma was quite a, like a cute cheeky name for our cat she only goes about it by it by about like 10 percent of the time because we now have like 6,000 nicknames for her okay guys that's it for today do you guys have your own fur baby do you have some advice to pass on to me are you perhaps thinking about it did you never consider it because of allergies and now you are let me know down in the comments if you liked this video and all the cuteness of emma don't forget to give me a thumbs up to show your support and help me with the algorithm if you have the time please go give me a follow on instagram i'm so close to getting 600 followers it would be really nice to get over that before the end of the year and as a bonus there is so much emma content on there i post about her every catter day there's lots of cute kitty photos on there for you now in addition to all the archaeological content thank you so much for watching guys and i'll see you next time Bye!